Two eyes, two ears, a chin, a mouth, ten fingers, two nipples, a butt, two kneecaps, a penis. I've just described to you the Loch Ness Monster. Ooh, hello, my friends. Hope you are well. Ever since hearing Creed give this thought-provoking speech, my wife has been asking me to make a Loch Ness Monster diorama. So today, that's exactly what I'm attempting, and I know your time is valuable, so let's get straight into it. I make a start by forming the basic structure of the diorama using some XPS foam, which I carve up with a hobby knife. And I'm not doing anything especially complicated for this one, I just want to get a nice embankment on one side where I can add some trees and greenery, leading down to a riverbed where I'll be adding Nessie later. All this foam is going to get covered up with rocks and flocks later on, so I don't mess around trying to add any finer textures to it. I just add some very gentle undulations like the back of a baby camel. Once I'm reasonably happy with the shape we've got, I score the upper embankment to help with adhesion and then cover the entire thing in wall filler, aka spackle, aka magic hobby paste. I know a lot of people use dedicated modeling compounds, but honestly this stuff is ridiculously cheap and it's easy to work with. Plus it gives a rock hard finish when it dries, so it's my go-to for diorama making. I give that time to dry thoroughly before sealing everything in with a mixture of PVA and paint, and then make a start on adding all of our greenery bits. So first up I'm taking out my homemade mud mixture and I'm slapping this down over everything. The vast majority of this ended up being covered by the end of the diorama, but I like to add this down underneath rocks and flocks so if any exposed ground pokes through it looks like actual mud instead of just brown paint. And the mixture gives extra durability to the diorama when it dries so that's a plus too. And to be fair, I was also just having a ton of fun applying this. I had a few different coloured batches I'd made previously and it was really satisfying blending those together with my brush. So it was definitely worth it for me. Anyway, I let this dry completely and then I cover everything in PVA so we can start adding our rocks and flocks. For our ground textures, I start with the riverbed where I first scatter on some larger rocks before blending them together with some smaller ones and a more gravelly sandy mixture. I scatter a darker basin mixture towards the top of the riverbank here and then add a whole lot of grassy green flocking to try and create a bit of a transition for the more rocky, muddy riverbed up to the embankment and grassy knoll. Once our first layers have dried, I take out my little squirt and give everything a good soaking with my special white goo, which is watered down PVA. This will seal everything in when it dries and before it does, I sprinkle on some different coloured grass flocks up top just to add a bit of variation here and some more basin mixture for blending the riverbed and the embankment bits together. And I think it looks really nice when it's dried actually. I was really pleased with this so far. Next up in our naturization process, I take a few trees I'd whipped up off camera using the wire hot glue gun method. Let me know if you'd like to see how that's done. And I stick them down using some more hot glue up on the grassy knoll here. Easy peasy, and there we have it, some lovely, happy little trees. And after they're rooted in, I get to work in making the grassy floor a bit more interesting with a variety of different tufts and little bits and bobs. I focus around the bases of the trees to start with, using some longer grass tufts and small shrubby bits to disguise any visible hot glue that's left, and then begin building up some patches of vegetation across the rest of the surface. As always, I didn't have a specific plan for this, but found that bunching together a variety of different tufts gave me a fairly realistic look. So I'd start by adding a couple of different grasses down, then I might add some shrubs around the edges to add a bit of texture variation, and then I might finish it off with some different coloured flowers here and there for some little bursts of colour. I then took some miniature bracken and other leafy plants I had and added them scattered around, which made everything just feel that tiny bit more alive like me in the morning after my first four litres of coffee. <sighs> These plants tend to have a bit of a glossy finish, so I gave them a quick touching up with some matte varnish, which helped them blend in with the rest of the diorama a lot better. And with that, the grassy knoll was done and was absolutely sparking joy for me, so it's time to finish off the riverbed. First up, I glued down some more random shrubbery, which looked like it could be some kind of aquatic plant life, and then used some of this green fibrous stuff I had too. I'm not really sure what this stuff is, but it looks pretty cool. Lastly, I had some of this lichen stuff, which looks like seaweed or riverweed, I suppose, and added a bunch of this down too. Nothing too crazy, but I think it does look like a riverbed. So I am liking the look of that. Because <laughs> I, I just said lichen a bit, oh, whatever. 
Now, my friends, the naturization is over. The time has come to add our Loch Ness Monster. And I've been scouring online to find the right miniature for this. But in the words of our Scottish compatriots, I couldn't find one. So I decided to try and make one instead. I start by cutting down some lengths of wire, twisting them together and bending them into a rough serpentine shape. Some people think of the Loch Ness Monster as a plesiosaur type dinosaur thing, but in my head it's a humpy serpentine creature so those people can kick rocks. I then scavenged through my bits for anything I thought would be usable, with this felbeast head and neck being a great find, and got to work cutting stuff up and gluing it to the wire frame. I was using super glue to start with for some reason which was way too fiddly and rage inducing so I switched to hot glue instead and stuck down some makeshift spines and fins. I'm going to use clay for the body but I didn't want it to take too long to dry so I first thickened out the wire with a coating of hot glue. This meant I only needed to add a thin coating of clay on top of this and do my best to smooth it out. I had played around trying to add a scaly texture off camera, but it wasn't really working. My clay skills just aren't good enough at the moment to get the fine scaly texture I wanted, so I just tried to get it looking as smooth as I could instead. Once the clay had set, I gave it a quick sanding down with a very fine grit sandpaper to get rid of the worst lumps and bumps, and then sealed everything in with a mixture of PVA and black primer ready to be painted. I had been looking through some pictures for painting inspiration and I quite like the look of the oarfish which many people have mistaken for sea monsters throughout the ages so I thought I'd try something along those lines. I started by base coating with a dark metallic colour and then stippling on some lighter metallic colours for some barely visible coloured variation. After that I stippled on a very faint bit of black just to give it a bit of texture and imply that it's covered in scales and then went around with a few different shades of blue to paint on some more scaly coloured splotches. I was trying to mimic the splotches all fish have but it ended up looking more like blue leopard print which I didn't mind actually I thought it would look quite good so we went with it. I first painted the fins and spines with a darker red and then added some very basic highlights with some brighter reds. I hit the tongue and teeth quickly also and then finished off with the eyes using a bit of green, a little bit of yellow and then a final black slit. I wasn't quite sure what our Nessie was going to look like before I'd made it but I'm really pleased with how it came out to be honest. It's far from perfect as everything I make always is, I'm sure everyone and their nans could do a lot better but not bad for an almost entirely scratch built creation. Anyway, all that's left to do now is to make a nice leak proof box around the diorama for the resin and then glue down Nessie. Not really sure why I didn't do this the other way around, I guess I just enjoy making things difficult for myself. Yeah. But yeah, I've been really dreading the resin pour to be honest. I've only used resin one other time in my entire life for something much smaller and I know it can have quite a finicky nature, but I tried to focus as much positive mental attitude as I could and got to work. I added some turquoise and also some silty coloured pigments into the resin mixture as I wanted an ever so slightly cloudy but quite blue colour still for the water and after I thorough mix in I started pouring it out over the diorama. Yeah, we ended up with quite a few bubbles actually once it had dried. I had been monitoring and popping all the ones I could with the butane torch, but still ended up with a lot of them, which is what I'd been most worried about for the resin. To be fair, some of them look quite cool, like these ones at the front look like Nessie has stirred up some bubbles from the riverbed, or there's some monstrous hot spring action going on down below, but then there's some which just look flat out bad. I have no clue how this massive eruption of a bubble on top came about, but it was giving me hot flushes of anxiety when I was looking at it. There was nothing I could do now, maybe I'd been too ambitious with my first real resin pour, maybe I'd not controlled my environment enough, maybe I hadn't mixed it enough, or maybe I'd mixed it too much, who knows. I was on quite a big downer about this actually, and I contemplated scrapping the whole project and this video along with it, but instead, I had a Kinder Bueno to calm me down and decided to make the most of it. I'll cover up what I can and embrace the remaining flaws. To try and obscure the big eruption bubble, I wound some wire into a rough duck shape, mixed up some millipart and did my best to sculpt a duck about to take flight. I gave it a quick paint job and then added it on top of the bubble trying to cover it as much as possible. So now we have a duck or maybe it's a goose, it is pretty big to be fair. 
I don't know, any semi-aquatic bird enthusiasts watching, feel free to give your expert opinions down below. Um, but yeah, the idea is that Nessie is sprung out of the water, scaring off this duck duck goose as she does so, and our horrific eruption bubble has been partially obscured. Nice. I used some water ripple effect on the top of the resin to add some gentle movement to the water with some nice ripply bits around where Nessie has emerged and this helps to hide some of the other surface bubbles a bit too. And finally I did some plastic art I'd painted black around the side edges to neaten it all up a bit. I had made these ever so slightly taller than the edges of the foam to hide some of the worst bubbles around the bottom of the resin, which meant the resin section did lose a tiny bit of surface area, but nothing too dramatic and I think it helped to make it look just that little bit better. So my friends, everything is finished, let's take a look at the final product. <laughs> Although the resin pour didn't go as well as I'd hoped, I'm still really pleased with this overall, and if nothing else, it's been a good learning experience for me. Although I'm not entirely sure what specific factor or factors cause so many bubbles, it's given me a lot of considerations to be mindful of the next time that I do a resin pour, and there will definitely be a next time. Even though the resin was far from perfect, I still really like the overall effect it has on the diorama, and I love the colour it has, a nice faint blue with just a little bit of cloudiness in there. So pretty much exactly what I was hoping for, in that respect at least. I'll be doing a lot of my own research for the next time I use resin, but if you have any ideas, feel free to leave them down below too. Anyway, on a more positive note, Nessie was a lot of fun to make and I'm really pleased with how that came out. It wasn't a massive deal of work really and I enjoyed working with the clay. It's always good to try and improve your skills so definitely a good experience in making that. And finally, the grassy knoll area with all the trees and tufts and flowers, although not especially complicated, looks really nice. I'm a big fan of nature scenery and dioramas and I'm very satisfied with how this area came out. The flowers and the bracken stick out to me the most and it's just a lovely little area overall. So yeah, all in all, bit of a mixed result with this one, but I'm very happy with it still despite it not being perfect. Like I said, I thought about not sharing this video, but not everything you make will be flawless, especially when you're experimenting with new techniques or materials. But that's all part of the fun and learning from these experiences and trying to make the best of them is what helps you to become better at them for next time. So I'm looking forward to my next resin work whenever that will be and I'm hoping it will be a little bit better than this one. I've been your boy, Big Swamp Brezza, Swamp Ratio, Swamp Ratio and I'll be back very soon. See ya!